This episode is brought to you by IVP. Few thinkers have been as influential in the church as Augustine of Hippo. Yet we easily forget he was a man of two cultures, or what Latino, Latina theology calls mestizaje. In his book, The Mestizo Augustine, Cuban-American historian and theologian Justo Gonzalez looks at the life and legacy of Augustine from the perspective of his own Latino heritage, and he finds the Bishop of Hippo to be a remarkable resource for the church today. As a listener of this podcast, you can receive 25% off of the Mestizo Augustine when you use the promo code IVPOD25. That's IVPOD25 at IVPress.com. This is IVP. Listening to Get in the Word with Truth Table. Your word is truth, your word is life. Presented by Innervar City Press. Your word is truth, your word is life. The Daily Audio Bible Podcast, read by Dr. Christina Edmondson and Akemeni Uwan. Let's get in the Word, and may the Word get in us. Open our eyes, that we may behold wonderful things in your Word. Old Testament Reading Isaiah chapter 32 through Isaiah chapter 33 Isaiah chapter 32, beginning at verse 1 Justice and wisdom will prevail. Look, a king will promote fairness. Officials will promote justice. Each of them will be like a shelter from the wind and a refuge from a rainstorm, like streams of water in a dry region, and like the shade of a large cliff in a parched land. Eyes will no longer be blind, and ears will be attentive. The mind that acts rashly will possess discernment, and the tongue that stutters will speak with ease and clarity. A fool will no longer be called honorable. A deceiver will no longer be called principled. For a fool speaks disgraceful things, His mind plans out sinful deeds. He commits godless deeds and says misleading things about the Lord. He gives the hungry nothing to satisfy their appetite and gives the thirsty nothing to drink. A deceiver's methods are evil. He dreams up evil plans to ruin the poor with lies, even when the needy are in the right. An honorable man makes honorable plan. His honorable character gives him security. The Lord will give true security. You complacent women, get up and listen to me. You carefree daughters, pay attention to what I say. In a year's time, you carefree ones will shake with fear, for the grape harvest will fail, and the fruit harvest will not arrive. Tremble, you complacent ones. Shake with fear, you carefree ones. Strip off your clothes and expose yourselves. Put sackcloth around your waist. Mourn over the field, over the delightful fields, and the fruitful vine, mourn over the land of my people, which is overgrown with thorns and briars, and over all the once happy houses in a city filled with revelry, for the fortress is neglected. The once crowded city is abandoned. Hill and watchtower are permanently uninhabited. Wild donkeys love to go there and flocks graze there. The desolation will continue until new life is poured out on us from heaven. Then the wilderness will become an orchard, and the orchard will be considered a forest. Justice will settle down in the wilderness and fairness will live in the orchard. Fairness will produce peace and result in lasting security. My people will live in peaceful settlements, in secure homes, and in safe, quiet places. Even if the forest is destroyed and the city is annihilated, you will be blessed. You who plant seed by all the banks of the streams, you who let your ox and donkey graze. Isaiah chapter 33, beginning at verse 1. The Lord will restore Zion. The destroyer is as good as dead. 
you who have not been destroyed. The deceitful one is as good as dead, the one whom others have not deceived. When you are through destroying, you will be destroyed. When you finish deceiving, others will deceive you. Lord, be merciful to us. We wait for you. Give strength each morning. Deliver us when distress comes. The nations run away when they hear a loud noise. The nations scatter when you spring into action. Your plunder disappears as if locusts were eating it. They swarm over it like locusts. The Lord is exalted. Indeed, he lives in heaven. He fills Zion with justice and fairness. He is your constant source of stability. He abundantly provides safety and great wisdom. He gives all this to those who fear him. Look, ambassadors cry out in the streets. Messengers sent to make peace weep bitterly. Highways are empty. There are no travelers. Treaties are broken. Witnesses are despised. Human life is treated with disrespect. The land dries up and withers away. The forest of Lebanon shrivels up and decays. Sharon is like the arid Rift Valley. Bashan and Carmel are parched. Now I will rise up, says the Lord. Now I will exalt myself. Now I will magnify myself. You conceive straw. You give birth to chaff. Your breath is a fire that destroys you. The nations will be burned to ashes. Like thorn bushes that have been cut down, they will be set on fire. You who are far away, listen to what I have done. You who are close by, recognize my strength. Sinners are afraid in Zion. Panic grips the godless. They say, who among us can coexist with destructive fire? Who among us can coexist with unquenchable fire? The one who lives uprightly and speaks honestly. The one who refuses to profit from oppressive measures and rejects a bribe. The one who does not plot violent crimes and does not seek to harm others. This is the person who will live in a secure place. He will find safety in the rocky mountain strongholds. He will have food and a constant supply of water. You will see a king in his splendor. You will see a wide land. Your mind will recall the terror you experience, and you will ask yourselves, where is the scribe? Where is the one who weighs the money? Where is the one who counts the towers? You will no longer see a defiant people whose language you do not comprehend, whose derisive speech you do not understand. Look at Zion, the city where we hold religious festivals. You will see Jerusalem, a peaceful settlement, a tent that stays put. Its stakes will never be pulled up. None of its ropes will snap in two. Instead, the Lord will rule there as our mighty king. Rivers and wide streams will flow through it. No war galley will enter. No large ships will sail through. For the Lord, our ruler, the Lord, our commander, the Lord, our king, he will deliver us. Though at this time your ropes are slack, the mast is not secured and the sail is not unfurled. At that time, you will divide up a great quantity of loot. Even the lame will drag off plunder. No resident of Zion will say, I am ill. The people who live there will have their sin forgiven. New Testament reading. John chapter 19, verses 17 through 27. The Crucifixion. So they took Jesus And carrying his own cross, he went out to the place called the Place of the Skull, called in Aramaic Golgotha. There they crucified him, along with two others, one on each side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had a notice written and fastened to the cross, which read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Thus many of the Jewish residents of Jerusalem read this notice, because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the notice was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write, the king of the Jews, but rather, this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Now when the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and made four shares, one for each soldier, and the tunic remained. Now the tunic was seamless, woven from top to bottom as a single piece. So the soldiers said to one another, Let's not tear it but throw dice to see who will get it. This took place to fulfill the scripture that says, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing, they threw dice. So the soldiers did these things. Now standing beside Jesus' cross were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. So when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing there, he said to his mother, woman, look, here is your son. He then said to his disciple, Look, 
here is your mother. From that very time, the disciple took her into his own home. This is the word of God for the people of God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us go boldly to God's throne of grace. God of heaven, I thank you for your word spoken unto us. Thank you, O God, that in due time, the fool, the wicked, the deceivers, those, O God, who plot evil on their bed, those who seek to disenfranchise the poor, the destitute, the marginalized, the minoritized, O God, there is a day coming, apart if they do not repent, there is a day coming for those, O God, who will want to trample underfoot those whom you have bound yourself to, the widow, the orphan, the poor, O Lord, the marginalized, who are despised in society, God. I thank you, O God, that there is a promise of restoration for Zion. Lord, I thank you that because of Jesus Christ's finished work on the cross, all the way to Calvary, he went for me. He went for us. I thank you that because of his finished work, that there is a great reversal, that there is restoration, that we, oh God, Gentiles have been engrafted in, into Zion, oh God. I thank you, oh God, that that we represent a branch of Zion, oh God. We often say that in church, that this branch of Zion is the language at some of our churches, oh God. And I thank you, oh God, for that recognition of the fact that we've been engrafted in, oh God, because of Jesus' sacrifice, because of the perfect life that he lived, because of uh, him carrying and becoming a sin offering for us, dying, being buried, and then rising from the dead. Three days later, God, we're, I'm grateful. I'm grateful, oh God, for his ascension. Lord, I thank you, oh God, that He's that Jesus Christ is seated at your right hand, oh God. And I thank you, oh God, that he's seated because his work is done. So I thank you for the restoration the full restoration that awaits Zion, O Lord God. I thank you, O God, that that full manifestation will come into view according to your time and according to your will. So would you help to uphold us by the power of the Spirit? Would you help us to continue to put one foot in front of the other by God's grace, knowing that it's a Spirit at work in us, sanctifying us, working in us to will and to do according to your good purposes, O God. I pray all of this in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Amen. We pray this time of getting the word with Truth Table has encouraged us all to not only be hearers of God's word, but doers. Share your reflections on these scriptures with us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag get in the word and hashtag Truth's Table. Saints, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Go with God. Get in the Word with Truth's Table is a production of InterVarsity Press. For 75 years, IVP has created and published resources that deepen lives for Christ to engage the university, church, and the world. Visit ivpress.com for more information. Our Bible reading plan is from BibleStudyTogether.com, and the Bible version is the new English translation used by permission. Sound engineering is from Pottery Studios, and our executive producer is Helen Lee. So oh.